they're actually killing 32 bit like for good the uh, no they're no. gonna try yeah <laughs> i remember saying it then and i was like do it cowards And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Vin Stone here at LGC Actual. I will be trying to drive the SS Nightmare Fuel, switching the bits, doing all this in our lovely little studio in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, where it's not 9 billion degrees. And the man up north, keeping Toronto safe from whatever's above Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> The, the Northwest Territories? That, yes, one of those. Jordan so. Savon. <laughs> and the men, the car legend, the, the, uh, the Richard Hammond of Cambridge. <laughs> the Stig's true identity. Also, no. Uh, but no. One Pedro Mateus. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and together with you, Shat Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Hey, look. What's new? What's going on? Oh, boy. I saw a thing. We talked about it on Wednesday. I want one of these really bad. Dude, this is a Zemo port. Have you seen these? No, I, 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 I'm I, it took me a while to figure them. out that that was a heat sink. <laughs> Dude. Mm -hmm. All right. Look, look at this. It's got dual gig necks on the back, two USBs, and it's x86 and quad core mm. up to eight gigs of room. They're hundred bucks, man. That's not bad. That's not bad. Like I, I, for years now, I've been looking for something to replace uh, your boxes with, uh, the 30 tens, you know, something that I can just like Velcro up mm -hmm. on the wall and never have to worry about them. So I might be getting one. Oh, hang on. Jordan's not seeing all this here. There's one other feature of this Jordan. That's kind of uh, interesting. Oh, uh -huh. what was this? It's got a PCI Express hole I, on the side. I saw that. Oh, okay. I saw that. I'm like, is that a PCIe hole? That's dope as hell, man. Put, put an ex expansion card in there. 4090. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no, see, my, my first instinct was, oh, my God, this is how I can replace my NAS. I just stick a SATA card in there and bam, mm -hmm. good to go. Oh, no, well, I mean, when, when you say uh, you want to stick a SATA card in it, uh, here, here's the other thing. Take, take a look on the other side of it. It's just got oh SATA. My, it's, it's, it's got, got two SATA. <laughs> no, th that's it's not even e SATA. SATA. That's a regular ass SATA, man. Oh, man. So I, I can. Damn. Right? Hey, that's pretty cool. That's pretty damn cool, isn't it? For a hundred bucks. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll put a link like, in the It runs at like 800 megahertz or whatever. But like... uh, 2.4 up to 2.8. Okay. Dual core, All quad right. core. Uh, it's Intel Celeries. Yeah, with uh, a yeah. two to four to eight gigs of uh, memory RAM options, I'm definitely going to pick one up. Um, Looks like a stomp box, honestly. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the they said it was uh, inspired by uh, Love, Death, and Robots, a character. Okay, okay, or something along those lines. So maybe you'll play around with that. The other thing I talked about like last week, we're not using, we're well, not using. I still got the options. Still sit back in the rack, trying to get away from using outboard gear for recording our shows. So this is week two with like modifications. If you listen to the pre pre super shows and there was a lot of like, oh, I need to fix that. We need to fix that. And Atomic was like, it's too loud. And I'm like, you're too old, man. But I fixed it because it really was too loud. Um, if you've ever done any type of like audio work, you've bought plugins and plugins are like, sometimes they're cheap, like 10, 15 bucks. And there's like crazy expensive plugins that are hundreds of dollars. I don't have anything like that. This was like, uh, I, I, I downloaded a demo of plugin. Uh, it's like, okay, that, that's kind of got the sound I'm looking for. It's doing the stereo separation. I'm like, I, I like that because I'm trying to match up what the Apex compiler was doing. And with the demo, I'm like, that's good enough. That's good enough. Buy it. It was on sale. It was like half off. It was like 30 bucks. Like, big deal, right? Then you activate it and start listening. It's like, that doesn't do what I want it to do. No. Under, other and further, you're, like, you're just screwed. You know, it's like buying a game. On, well, I guess Steam's a bad example these days, right? Refunds, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. You just uh, throw a refund in. But I'm like, well, I guess I'm stuck with it. So I've done the time honor tradition of like, well, I'm going to make this work. <laughs> so I've, the, the, the money has been spent. Right. Now it's time to cost, suck up. Baby. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All the way down. I ended up like, strangely enough, it's still in the stack right now because the passive effect when the plugin is disabled, but it's still running things through it, which a lot of plugins support this feature, adds to the sound. Hmm. Like, oh, okay. That wasn't worth 30 bucks, but okay. Um, 
there we go. That, that is we'll, 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 we'll convince ourselves that this was worth 30 bucks. <laughs> Zima boards and audio plugins. Pedro, you were going to tell us a new tale. Well, uh, the, the cars got uh, proper tires now. <laughs> they're four not, Yokos. Uh, yeah, four Yokohamas, the V701s. Uh, they're really quiet. Like, the car went from making the usual old tire noise on the road to... I can hear the engine now. <laughs> they, were, they, were they so loud that Nori got up in the middle of the night and kicked them? No. <laughs> no, that's just me snoring. Uh, snoring. But, <laughs> yes. Next snoring week, I'm having the, uh, the people with the van. Um, they're going to drive over here and Kidnap your refurbish. Girlfriend? No, they're going to refurbish the, uh, the rims. The alloy wheels that it has, because they, they're... <laughs> A lot of um, sidewalks were climbed with those wheels. They're scratched and corroded and banged. It's, they 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 need either new ones or freshening up. So we're doing the freshening up first, and when we can't afford four new ones because they're expensive, we we will afford them. <laughs> what do we get? The spoiler. Uh, no, it, it's already got a spoiler. It's not very big, I mean, a, but yeah, it is the sports mode. Right? <laughs> when, 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 when are you getting in the drop kit? Mm. Neon lights. Uh, I, I I very much like how high up off the ground it is. I'm not going to be dropping it at all. Might get some are, are, longer are, are, side skirts are, are, just are, because are they look get, nice. Like, the the, 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 bo- the bouncing <laughs> shit though. Oh man, no. <laughs> doesn't need an hydraulic kit. Doesn't need uh, air suspension. No, it's fine. Can we at I least saw- get some fuzzy dice? Yeah, so just all all the That's fuzzy dice. manageable, and and and, and, a, and a and a baby on board sticker. Yeah. Oh, Nori, Nori, if you're listening, screw with them one day. Put that on. The... Just order one. Just randomly yes. shows up. No, fuck. Then, like, oh, what? Um, my my or or my, my other child is an honor student. <laughs> so Jordan Spong, outside of packing your freezer with meat, that's a euphemism. Uh, what else you been up to? Uh, not much, actually. Um, I, I guess, uh, I guess di- diet time is over, so I've been Oh, right, what eat- was it? You, you were talking about, like, ice cream or something Yeah, like I, I, I ordered some ice cream, and they sent me the wrong one, but it was... You powered it, through it. it. I, I, powered, I powered through <laughs> that entire pint ice cream. It, 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 it was hard, but I made that sacrifice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so now that, now that that's done, I'm at, uh... At two sixty five ish now. Okay. After 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 a week of eating, uh, so that's that's pretty good. Now now it begins Operation Seven Hundred Pound Deadlift. So okay. That that's that's my plan for end of year. Got to make myself fat and then be able to do that. I, I look forward to that uh, video in our Discord. <laughs> yes. Either, either either that or the horrible failure of me going. Ugh! Oh God. Stay up full. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, it just bl- blacks out, and it's just the intro to Skyrim. It's like, ah, you're finally awake. <laughs> you're finally awake. <laughs> Directed by M. Night Shyamalan. I don't think we could ever teach the horse how to deadlift, though. It's just not got to edit. it. I mean, the uh, the horse is already dead. It doesn't need to be lifted. Or maybe maybe, maybe it just needs to be, like, wet fact. It's the steam. steam. <laughs> Speaking of wet and- facts. Yeah, do you remember the Steam Link? That thing that Valve undercut all of their business partners with back the in the day? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Steam Link, that $30 uh, Le- teeny Link tiny Nux. little device. Yeah. Well, uh, they also released an Android app, which just did that. It's also available as a flat pack for uh, good old desktop Linux. And uh, they finally decided to, or someone at the uh, the company, remembered that, wait a second, we have this app and we haven't updated it in forever. So they have. Since 2015. They, yeah. <laughs> Since they released it effectively. Uh, so they've uh, released a new version, version 1.3.3. I see what you do there, because Valve can count the three. Uh, the, <laughs> they added support for over 600 Android devices. They have new high quality 1080p and 4K streaming configurations. That last one, I still don't get it. Uh, added sensor fusion support for the uh, Backbone One controller, which uh, I looked up before the show because Jordan mentioned it. it's like, oh, that's a a hundred dollar little pad controller that goes yeah. on the side of your Android phone. 
Well, so no. so original originally it was for iPhone, and like that makes sense because iPhones have like a pretty consistent size, and when there's a new iPhone out, generally like it does they'll make those dimensions change. They have an Android version of this as well, and Android phones kind of run the gamut. So, <laughs> I, I yeah, you're 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 paying one hundred and thirty dollars for like some some slap on pad things, but at least they'll work with the the remote streaming. Yeah, and the uh, remote play anywhere. They've improved the reliability, so maybe you'll finally be able to play with your Steam library games while you're at work on your phone. I'm gonna try that on Monday. We'll see how that goes. What's what, high what, 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 the, what does reliability mean? Because it technically I, works. Yeah, I, it, yes. we were always able to connect. We're old. Like, we're easily impressed. We're like, huh. <laughs> It, it was it was always able to connect, but like yeah, the 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 latency and the quality and the interface was the big thing. My experience has been like if you don't have a game that has like is end to end controller support, you're gonna have a bad time with the remote play anywhere. Um, and like yeah, good luck if you have more than one display hooked up to uh, your your computer that you're you're streaming from. We were talking about this in the pre pre super shows, and though you would think that Game Scope is kind of a solution to this problem mm -hmm. because you can just launch the game in Game Scope and then stream that, and it's on its own little isolated virtual display. It's like as this is the only display it has. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As, as opposed to having to share the entire desktop and then shrinking, restricting that one little corner of it, it seems like a, seems like something they could do to improve this. Instead of that, what you do get is not one, but up to four untitled windows that are going <laughs> to pop up on your desktop, <laughs> and uh, then Steam's just going to lock right the hell up, and you're going to have to force close to that. At least that's my experience. I tried this last night, played around with it. I did manage to get things running just a little bit on my S6, which, you know, I mean, it's okay tablet. And, uh, couldn't get my, uh, it wouldn't detect my PS4 controller. Android's like, hey, I see the PS4 controller. Add, paired, done. This thing's like, nah, not having it. So uh, playing with the on-screen uh, touch controller, th th that's about as miserable of an experience as oh, one yeah. might imagine. Just, especially on like a big-ass tablet. Yeah, like mm -hmm. on, on a phone, it probably... Like, Maybe. Th this form factor, like, this is approximately like controller size. Like, right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know what? The picture quality and all that, because I, I just loaded up a Trekmania, uh, Nation, uh, Trackmania 2 Stadium. And uh, like it looked okay, but I really wanted to see what the latency was, you know, with the controller, because that's how your brain's going to, my brain's going to process that. And it just could never happen. However, after spending about 45 minutes, you know, with the initial discovery failing, having to do the manual pin code and then going, hey, in the bandwidth thing being kind of sketchy with its detection, I had to go back to what we were talking about last week with the uh, PlayStation wireless portable thing. The I get key. it. I get it. I get it. Because if you are in that like little segment of the market that wants that uh, little device laying around the house where you can just do the remote thing and you got the box sitting already, right, it's already on. Hundred and ninety nine bucks isn't a bad price for something you can just pick up and it's gonna work. Yeah. Is uh, this what Steam's got? Ain't that? <laughs> and like they, they have they have stuff in like Samsung TVs for like with the Steam Link app. Like they're so like th this is this is something that they could they could definitely improve. And again, again, go go watch the pre pre super shows and we yeah. talked about that. And least. hey, I mean, it's good that they occasionally remember that they have these things. Yes, and they do. Yeah. Updates too. <laughs> Not on Ubuntu though. Oh man, who remembers uh, when we were doing this show? It was a Saturday night. And we were like, can you fucking believe this? Like, <laughs> they're actually killing 32 bit, like, for good? The, the, no, they're the, gonna try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember saying it then, and I was like, do it, cowards. Uh, <laughs> somebody's got to at some point, right? Like, they, they're gonna make that hard cutoff, and I just kind of want to see what the fallout was gonna be. Part of that fallout, okay, well, this is what we're talking about. Uh, you know, Popey, he posted a thing on his uh, blog, i386 and Ubuntu will not die and yeah you know because back in june of 2019 ubuntu did the thing something rather bold man um they're just gonna go ahead and completely get rid of 32-bit support and we're not talking about you know i386 isos we're just like 32-bit in general and that was with uh 19.10 so there goes your gaming there goes wine all that fun stuff now that same week or it might have been the week after that canonical reverse course after everybody went are you high no, I may only a little bit. <laughs> um, they reversed course and like Steam came out and made an announcement and said, Hey, uh, we're not going to support Ubuntu 
releases anymore. And like, even today, you'll look at like your Steam uh, installer. Like, it started out on Ubuntu, man. It did. And that's like one of the reasons that you kind of like think that like the Steam Deck's running Arch these days instead of a uh, canonical it's on Ubuntu. And it's not a really hard stretch. Like, there is a Walterverse where the Steam Deck's running Ubuntu. Mm-hmm. Or at least some flavor of Debian. Right. Something yeah. along those lines. Um, so what happened? Well, they got a new installer. It's a Flutter-based installer for Ubuntu. And somebody forgot to add the 32-bit support to the image. And it's been a while. And I think the reason nobody ever noticed is it, you're just carrying on from your initial Steam install. Yeah, if, if, if you do an mm-hmm. in-place upgrade, then all the stuff is already in place. It mm-hmm. just only affects uh, the net new installs. Right. And so like, it took a while for somebody to run across this. And of course, Canonical's like, Oops, and Popey points out like the best way to do it to uh, just get around is just install the official Steam Dab and that should get everything in. But you know, Pedro, here's the thing though. You could avoid all these problems just by installing the Steam Steamy sta- Snap. I don't even want to say yeah. it. The, the, the Steam Snap? <laughs> the Steam is not a snap. <laughs> Yeah, uh, because uh, the the whole post came from a, a Mastodon thread, and Popey pointed out that one of the people did bring up, um, you know, sensible people brought up the fact that this is canonical breaking the dev, so you're forced to use the snap. Uh, and I, I'm sure that thought occurred to someone at canonical at one point, that one person that went, oh, if we move Steam, you know, the most widely used application on Linux desktop Linux currently uh, that just about everyone has because everyone has their game uh, libraries on Steam or at least they have a bunch of free games that they can access even without paying any money. So let's just make them use the snap. That way uh, we'll have the foothold. I'm sure that was a really good idea at one point for that one person. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's, it could be like a fringe benefit. It's like, but again, again as, as, as Popey indicates, like this is this is probably like pretty unintentional. Yeah. Um, yeah, be, because like um, th- this list of 32 boot packages that uh, Ubuntu is providing, it's not even like full 32 bit support. It was a crowd source list of packages that they know that stuff like Wine and Steam are going to need just to run. And that's it. But like, yeah, I don't I don't think 32 bits ever going to die, at least not in x86 land, because uh, like you can absolutely have a very good experience running a 60 x86 64 bit only Linux. You're mm-hmm. just not going to be playing any old video games out of the box. Um, and like and a lot of wine applications, uh, something I run into yeah. is uh, not even games, but like wine 32 bit applications uh, for wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like uh, and like. They they try they tried to make x86 64 bit only that didn't work that was that was titanium right mm-hmm. we uh, the whole the whole selling point of x86 64 is like hey it's 64 bit but your 32 bit apps still work and so we're we're, we're at least in x86 land we're going to be stuck with this forever we've seen a successful pure 64 bit cutover and stuff like ARC 64 but that had a pretty rough break that was yeah. basically like hey do like. We're the only, the, in fact, the only way they're they're supporting 32-bit uh, user space apps in ARM these days is just straight up virtualization. They're just like, mm-hmm. hey, we'll we'll emulate your 32-bit x86 processor or your 32-bit ARM processor because we well, Apple we did like, it. Apple yeah. with 64-bit only. Yeah, yeah, Apple did do uh, 64-bit only. Um, uh, we, even with that break in ARM specifically, you saw a lot of because of the Raspberry Pi that was 32-bit ARM originally. When they moved to 64-bit ARM, a lot of people installed the new version of Raspberry Pi OS and went, why don't all my games, why don't all my things work? <laughs> Basically, or, uh, all hey. of your everything's work. I mean, even <laughs> like 64-bit <laughs> versions of like uh, Raspberry Pi OS is, I think the 64-bit version is still in beta. Yeah. And like even even for iOS, they were still using the, the fat binary. So they were packaging both the 32-bit and 64-bit uh, images alongside with it. Just so, just for maximal support. So, like, yeah, the 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 whole the whole thirty two bit break, at least in at least for x eighty six, I don't think will ever happen. There's just too much legacy software. Um, wine sixty four uh, is the thing, and they're working on it. They're working they, on the they, wine they, problem. They are, uh, but that 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 that's still that's still a ways out though. Like they've they've, they've been working on that problem for a while. And so still, is this is going to be where it's going to be like risk five or the arm whatever. It's going to be that hard break before people are mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm going to finally get it. I always thought it would be like a this is where you could kind of get me on board with containerized uh, applications on the desktop, which I'm otherwise just violently against, is for games. 
Well, and 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 again, the 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 advantage here of using the Steam Snap on Ubuntu is, yeah, you package all all of the libraries that uh, Steam needs to run are just contained within the container and can be managed that way. And if you don't want to have 32 bits uh, libraries installed system wide, you can just scope them to that or an app image. That. I mean, or or an app image or a flat pack or pressure vessel or whatever, whatever, right? Whatever, there's, right? Um, there's definitely going to be ways around it. And I, I guess that's what it's going to take. Like long as there's i386, 64, whatever we want to call it. We're going to have to deal with the, um, like, I mean, again, to what you said, though, if you're not playing games and messing around with one, because I can well, run yeah. a long time on a, a fresh Debian install before I remember, oh, right, I got to install the i386 uh, yeah. for Steam. It, it, it's literally just games and wine, pretty much. Like pretty much. Nine, yeah. If you're doing, like, development, just web browsing, your web browser is a 64-bit app, like, yeah. shit. I, I, I remember uh, yeah, back in the games and legacy uh, software. If you are, if you work in a place that still uses a lot of old machinery that requires old software, you're going to need those 32 and some time, no, you sometimes you need, 16 you need to install bit. the new version of OS 2 Warp. <laughs> I don't want to pay $140 for a license. Me either. <laughs> hey, let's talk about a couple of game updates this week, starting with something. Uh, yeah, DLC. I, I I like turtles. Yeah, uh, we. I mean, we 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 like turtles enough that we played through the entire Shredder's Revenge on stream multiple times. Uh, but yeah, they have the new DLC out. It comes with uh, two new characters. Uh, they they uh, said before that it was going to be Usagi Ujimbo, which was the uh, first new character. But they said characters, and they never specified the second one. Now we know it's Karai, Shredder's daughter from uh, the TMNT Extended Universe. So that's nice. New characters means you can actually fucking see where, where your dude is in this game. As you can see, if you're watching the video version, there's a lot of flashing colors and a lot of the characters look very similar. So they added a bunch of different like stylistic palettes as well, uh, as well as the uh, survival mode where you can unlock all of these. That's a floating cow head. I am now very hungry for beef. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the price is a little steep though. $7.99 for what is effectively two characters and, uh, and like one new game mode is, is a little much. I, I would have preferred it to be like the four in the four ninety nine area. Um, but also like there's licensing shit. I'm all for giving Stan Sakai more money. Cause like that guy got did dirty a lot. So yeah. I went into this and I saw the DLC and I guess Jordan, you put it in the show notes at the bottom because we always do after shows and, yeah. and um, I was like, oh yeah, all right, DLC. Let me just go. I just, you know, seven bucks on Pulse Buy. I'm like, that's not a bad. And we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Like, seven ninety nine is not bad for like a new DLC. And I installed it, and I went looking around. I'm like, all right, how do I get into the new levels and stuff like that? I'm like, what? All right, let's go re check out the story page. All oh, right, there's no new levels. There's no new story. This is genuinely two characters and a new mode, a new mode which is just an endless survival mode. Yeah, and uh, comes with a leaderboard if you care about that yeah. stuff. If you if you really need your turtle, oh man, here's the part of the show where we talk about turtle dicks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> twenty three forty eight. <laughs> we made it twenty three forty eight before the turtle dicks came up. Um, not, but my hot take on this because my initial thought was like seven seven ninety nine or seven nineteen on sale. It's like that's a pretty good price for some DLC. To which I like this is what the DLC is. It went from like uh kind of a hot take this this was not a cheap game uh for an indie game man uh it was 24.99 i'm like this seems like a quality of life dlc that should have just been like hey keep playing the game guys yeah i think the the, the five dollars like jordan mentioned would have been uh, very five good bucks, yeah maybe yeah. <laughs> also like maybe big glowing because that trailer does not do a good job conveying that like this is a single mode with just two characters yeah, no, it's, it's it's the end. You see the 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 new stage is is a survival endless wave mode. <laughs> mm. I mean, there's new artwork. I mean, all the like they have different backgrounds, but they're not stages. But you know, again, hey, yeah. if, if you're looking, to, this is aimed at the people who want to get good and have their names on the letter boards. Like mm -hmm. that's that's what this is for. Or maybe you just like the rabbit dude, and uh, I didn't even know about Sh that was Shredder's daughter, but I learned something yep. today. Yeah, I knew she was uh, in the foot because of, well, how she's dressed. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I did not know about. Uh... Yeah, she's like, like character wise, she's kind of like the anti hero, where it's like sometimes she's working with the turtles, but sometimes she's working against them. Kind of like a cat, like they're, they're equivalent of Catwoman or Electra or something like that. Yeah, uh, see, I wanted a playable version of the Technodome. 
I, I, I wanted a playable version of those like weird frog guys. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Why don't we get like a Battletoads crossover, man? See that? Oh, see that? That could be cool. Like a Mortal Kombat style, like Battletoads versus TMNT. Yeah. I, I just want a multiplayer level online of that jet ski level from Battletoads because nothing's ever made me as angry, I think, to date. Yes. As We're playing like, that with another human being and watching them fuck up. <laughs> and, and then you fucking up a split second later because you're like, because yeah, you, the only, I, I, I've seen someone beat that level. The only way to do it is to know exactly where all the enemies are spawning ahead of time. There's no television. It's all the jumps. It's all the jumps and having two people having to get that in sync. Like I, I remember spending afternoons like, I won't kill you if you keep fucking. Up, man. <laughs> man, see that, that that would be an interesting challenge multiplayer with save state and like you have a budget of like a thousand save states can you get through battle oh, dude you see that'd be a problem that we need a multiplayer <laughs> capable nes emulator and well, mm, that, such a thing does not exist never though. unlike rune masters no no rune masters well they didn't exist until uh earlier in the week uh you may be aware of a game called the last epoch which, uh, admittedly, I only own because Chat Realm Denizen and Patreon extraordinaire Scott Bichot did some work for uh, them at one point. Uh, sole reason I own the game, literally. <laughs> uh, and this update finally brings the final uh, mastery or specialization for the mage class. Uh, each of the classes have uh, three specializations. Once you get to max level, quote unquote. Uh, you can specialize on one of them and then you have new skill trees for each specialization. So this one is the 2001 browser MMO runes. I mean, rune master. Uh, and it, the game itself is still in early access. I don't know how long they will be in early access for, but it, it, it this is one of they're, them. They're, and they're, they're not going to beat project zomboid. That's for no, sure. <laughs> for, that for, one's for, got for, like several years lead <laughs> for, for, uh, from what I understand though, this new, uh, rune master class basically turns you into the defect from slay the spire where you get like mm -hmm. a bunch of these runes and you can have different combinations of them and you can have different spell effects. I was always a fan of that, like sort of magicka ad hoc skill system where like you can combo stuff. Oh yeah. Those microtransactions. One. Man. Oh, oh, hang on shop available items. Maybe that's just the iceberg. It's, uh, all let's go to all let's see <laughs> what's this game cost get, get the get the points man 40 so 50 uh uh 90 100 well let's listen, listen the important thing is with all of the all the language support they added you can now give them you can now spend 19.99 <laughs> for points in whatever currency you prefer and understand what you're buying ostensibly well, I mean, the game's like 34 bucks on top of everything else. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is not a cheap game. They, they, they've been trying to make Diablo... Uh, what's the Lost other one? Ark. Path of Exile. Lost Ark. Something like that. And it's Linux native. I'll give them that. They've been doing good with uh, keeping the game Linux native. Uh, but it's, yeah, selling microtransactions while you're in early access. Well, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, <laughs> our new tradition of let's go check on and change all the reviews to negative and uh, we'll take, oh, <laughs> don't have to change the reviews, do we? Um, <laughs> the, 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 the last couple of ones have not been very good. <laughs> the game is good, but they don't actually work on the things that people want, such as finishing the actual story or putting in classes they promised three years ago. <laughs> hey, guys, we added a class. Cash shop added. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah selling microtransactions on a game that's not finished is that's not even double dipping that's triple Man, dipping uh that's Stop called it. the arc survival evolved <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> this is a very nuanced review diablo 4 bad last ecobot good <laughs> yeah people are not pleased with the uh you know what i'm gonna say rightfully so like uh if you've spent any extra development time with your for your bonus monetization shit for a 34 dollar game instead of finishing the actual game yeah yeah Bad luck. There's no way to spend it. Whoever on the team was like, this is going to be a bad luck. That person on the team was right. We should mm -hmm. listen to him. Um, no, they're, they're, they're fired now, so we don't have to listen to them. We, <laughs> they don't work here anymore. Pro tip. we don't want negative Nancy's on the team. Yeah, it's, yeah you're not it, being a team it, player. You're being toxic. It, 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 mm -hmm. it's, it's the meme where they just throw the guy out the window, right? Oh, right. <laughs> yep. 100%. Um, all right. That's going to do us for our game updates this week. Let's go ahead and jump into some news. We were talking about this in the pre pre super shows, and go back and listen if you're a patron. But NVIDIA has a driver that works on Linux. We're aware Surprising. of this. Surprising. I know, right? However, there's always been a little bit of a contention between kernel developers 
and the NVIDIA kernel module. And things are going to change up because you got to think about like uh, back in the long, long ago, we're talking like 2020. Remember those times when we we're also innocent? Oh, last year, you mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Last year, six months ago. Because <laughs> it's now December, uh, however, the many Yeah, we're, 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 <laughs> 2020. We're, we're almost into 2021, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. So some changes were made back in 2020 that uh, it, just in the kernel that basically stopped uh, any type of proprietary module um, from using the GPL only symbols. NVIDIA's like, all right, fine. What else? They hacked around it. Of course they did. Uh, but how they did it was interesting. Uh, they did it by importing exports from their proprietary modules into an allegedly, air quotes, GPL license module, then re-exporting those. I was like, don't hate the player on that one, okay? I was like, fair, fair, well the, enough. The, the, they, they, got, they figured out it worked if you did that. Right. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't work anymore. So the that. reason we're bringing this up, uh, I love uh, who was it from Christoph Helvig. Uh, very, very diplomatically, it's like, um, it has recently come to my attention that NVIDIA is circumventing the protection added, blah, blah. So uh, this is going to stop that, man. Uh, here we go. Because this is in, baby. This is this is like been, this is committed. This is heading to the kernel. What does this mean for you as an NVIDIA GPU owner? That's right. You have an AMD card. Somebody's <laughs> going to say that. Like, I don't have to worry about this. Well, for the other 80% of the market. Okay. Uh, well, on Linux, according to the Steam survey, uh, AMD Which, is winning. See? <laughs> it's like 20% NVIDIA, but yeah. Well, it, 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 mean, it means that 546 or 350 or 536 or whatever is going to have to have a different way of getting getting and that of course according to the steam survey both amd and uh nvidia video cards are rounding errors compared to intel <laughs> yes <laughs> because everyone uses their laptop right <laughs> although, although no one no one's using arc that doesn't even crack no. other gpus That's, right yeah no. <laughs> it's it, dark it, for it, that a little, little sad i do i do like this little, little uh justification here where uh, where the uh, author of the patch says it's logical to restrict it being used on export symbol GPL and prevent NVIDIA from costly DMCA circumvention and ac of access control lawsuits. So we're doing you guys a favor. <laughs> it's like we're, we're, it's we're, like a backhanded we're, we're slap mm -hmm. as he walks past. Yeah. Just like we're 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 we're, we're, just, we're just helping you out, guys. It's fine. <laughs> we, Looking we, out we, for old Team Green. Yeah, we we it's a little, it's a little oopsie. That's not right, Linus. You. He's happy about it. <laughs> Which I, uh, and, and, uh, uh, Pedro brought up the point in the in the pre pre super season, which you guys really got to listen to. But it's like, well, how how does this happen? Because developers are fucking lazy, right? They they found they found dare. a way they found a way to circumvent a restriction that they would have otherwise had to work around. Mm -hmm. The actual the actual cost of this is probably going to be like a percentage point or two of performance in like a game. In, in pro and probably in last e you don't need to bypass the kernel taint. I mean, okay, sure. Uh, if you don't want that in your error logs and you're just building something for your own use that you have something that you need that kernel module for, by all means, lie and say that your kernel module is licensed under the GPL, despite it not actually having a license because you're not sharing it with anyone, which is effectively what at NVIDIA are doing, proprietary something. So, yeah, no, it's just, why? Why? Why would you do you're a massive Lazy. corporation. What's what? <laughs> that's part of the problem? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get it done. Get it done. We don't care. We don't care how. Get it done. Don't do it properly. Just get it done. No troubleshoot. Only fix. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> no debug. Only fix. <laughs> yeah. O o o only release. No QA. So you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Pedro just announced that Nvidia will be forking the Linux kernel. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, quite the logical leap. <laughs> You'd the, have the, to the, take that. The, 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 they're 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 gonna call it Ninix. Ninix. <laughs> oh, For all the Nina Nina that they did. Jensen Ginix. <laughs> Ginix. Oh, dude. Uh, you know, I, there's not a. It doesn't require much mental gymnastics. But like, oh yes, I can see the Nvidia optimized kernel from now on. Yeah. Mm. I. They probably have uh, a 
in-house uh, version that they run for themselves that basically just removes the tainting option altogether. <laughs> like, they, 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 bypass they the tainting and go straight for like, the ass. <laughs> the internal driver probably just removes all the binning and be, be like, yeah, yeah, we can absolutely make this 3070 run like a 3080. It's fine. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, what does this what what does this do for like end users, Jordan? Like, well, we have to throw away our NVIDIA cards. Probably, probably not. Again, this just means that in the uh, there's probably going to be breakage when six six releases, and mm -hmm. then NVIDIA is going to have to release a new driver as they do once every like what two three months. Yeah, and the problem will go away, and people will get on with their lives. Are they but in have, the like, meanwhile, the... you got to stay on six six five if you're oh, on man. the NVIDIA. Yeah, that was our solution last time back in 2020. Mm -hmm. like, don't use yeah. the new kernel right now. Uh, I, I was like, okay, we're going to get a new, uh, flag for the dot run, like get wrecked hippies and just power through it. Like, all right, who knows? Shut up and do it. <laughs> shut yeah, shut no, up and do I'll it. I'll admit it was clever the way that they were doing that, but yeah, everyone could see. I, I mean, it. it falls into like technically correct, but also like not within the spirit of the law. There. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, wait, like, yeah, if, if you, if you don't want to use the compatible licensing, you gotta, you gotta do it the hard way. Yeah. You don't know. Uh, well, can't NVIDIA have ever just like straight up. I mean, they're never going to open source their stack. AMD didn't open source their stack because they wanted to. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they did it because. Much they had no yeah. well like no, no, if, they, if they wanted any buy-in in the they enterprise or server market nothing left to yeah. lose at that point yeah um i don't see nvidia it, 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 again we're not even nvidia's customers like why are we even like, whatever like, we're user. not uh, being ai developers right now yeah. so yeah. <laughs> or whatever comes I, after that that's going to be the uh, <laughs> i i i'm just i'm just staring at the price tag of a 4070 and i'm just me like, too buddy me too but i'm like crying <laughs> single it, single tear drop it, it's not even the price that's bugging me so much it's knowing that that's a fucking 4060 yeah with a different number on it with with it with a sticker on it yeah, yeah. it's a 4060 super <laughs> that's what it is that's being generous um, <laughs> Maybe, oh. maybe maybe we could fix it with our mod manager, though. Right. Yes. <laughs> Let's uh, do some hardware level modding with the new Nexus mod app. Well, it, 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 it's, it's very, very new. Someone on Reddit, uh, Migubi, uh, found that the, um, the Nexus mod apps uh, created by the Nexus mods people, uh, they have a little GitHub page with a release app image and uh, you could just download the source code and uh, give it a shot try to compile it for yourself but they say that it will be eventually a replacement for uh vortex which is currently the official um mod manager that nexus mods uses uh, it was created and effectively maintained by a single person for ages because they didn't have or didn't want to allocate the resources necessary for more people to do it. But now they're saying, okay, fine, we'll do it properly. Because uh, I guess mod organizer, the people behind that are eating their lunch, whatever the case may be. Uh, all I can say is because, yes, they do say, yes, we are supporting Linux. Fucking finally. But then they end that particular sentence by saying, what games are supported on these platforms? Example, do we support Skyrim through Wine on Linux is yet to be determined. Don't don't fuck it. Don't fuck it right at the uh, end. Come on. <laughs> I, 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 I do kind of love this cart before the horse mentality. I, I appreciate them being like, hey, we have a way to produce a Linux binary, so we don't have an excuse. It we, we can build it for Linux. But like right now it produces a binary that like spits out a help dialogue, I guess. And that's kind of it. Um. But this this one is kind of neat because uh, Vortex does uh, metadata based uh, file management. This one does mm -hmm. actual file based checksum management, which is pretty handy when you're fucking around with DLLs. Because when an update comes, you can be like, "Hey, the checksum on this file uh, has been altered. Do you want to restore the proper one?" Yes. Okay. Then my my game works. So that's that's gonna be that's gonna be very very nice. There the the Reddit thread which we also have linked in the show notes. The the guy who posted it has a very interesting point. Why don't they just name this like Vortex Two? Why 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 call it why call it the Nexus mod app? Why not just use I the guess they want name the yeah they want just like okay it's Nexus mods so it's the Nexus mods app specifically. We made NMA. this. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah no I. I 
major kudos, seriously, uh, f- to the st- uh, Steam Tinker launch people who actually made installing Vortex and managing game mods across different Proton prefixes and physical storage drives so very easy to use on Linux. It, you literally just install Vortex using ST, uh, STL and away you go. To, and to hopefully, that, to, the, to that point, to that point, uh, Nexus Mods app people, if you're listening to this, Go talk to them. Go go yeah, track down seriously. STL people and like fucking get in touch. They they yeah, have this shit figured they, out. They've already done the hard work of figuring out how to get your thing that didn't even support Linux at all and getting that to work properly on Linux across multiple physical drives. Go talk to them. It's got to be a weird spot <laughs> for a, a lot of people that uh, you can always kind of sniff some of that uh, DNA in certain projects. People are like fuck Linux. I ain't got fucking Linux. And here comes big old Valve fucking up their equation <laughs> like releasing the Steam Deck. Now all of a sudden these people are like, the fuck this doesn't work on my Steam Deck for, bro? Like, uh, <laughs> I installed Windows 11 and everything. Yeah, be, be, because like, <laughs> fuck Linux? You're like, nah, homie, that don't work anymore. I got the Steam Deck. Get out of here. Like, fix yeah, this no, shit. Yeah, uh, no, I want to play it on my games console mm-hmm. that it's, you know, it's a computer, so it should run the thing. But, 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 fuck Linux? Huh? <laughs> hey, yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't sing like it used to. So good on Valve for that. Mod managers, uh, kind of been missing, kind of been missing on Linux. And maybe like you, like me, like old man Vin here. You're like, I don't fuck around with mod managers. I don't, but I understand. I've had it explained to me, like manually adding mods. Oh boy, uh, that becomes impractical after you like the amount of mods that you have on your system surpasses one. Because you're talking oh, oh, yeah. different directories, different places, and different games. And you think about Skyrim, you got 30 mods installed. You can't keep track of that. There's a new version out. Oh, man, what version do I have installed? And and those mods are basically required to play Skyrim at this point, too. So, like... I mean, yeah. if you're a heretic and don't enjoy, like, the real Skyrim, the, the pure Skyrim experience. The, 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 the one that Todd Howard keeps releasing over and over and yes. over and over again. <laughs> Well, I mean, the thing is, is like, if you bought that, I got the uh, anniversary, it comes pre-modded now. Mm, it's got like a hundred mods and stuff <laughs> from the computer. It has all the DLCs and everything loaded up. But yeah, no, and for a while, just to stay within the Bethesda example, uh, Fallout 3 didn't work without mods for well over 10 years uh, until effectively Microsoft bought um, Bethesda. Bethesda or Zenimax and said, fix that shit now <laughs> and they finally released an update in 2022 <laughs> has anybody played around with a uh, nobody with a uh, star baby thing no what is it called starfield starfield that's yes. like starforge no <laughs> in, in, in my brain i, I want to play fallout in space at some point but not for that price I don't want to pay sixty pounds, fifty nine ninety nine. Your peasant pounds. can't get it for sixty. It's a hundred dollars for early access. <laughs> no, I, I, that's the I, I, thing. Even just the base version, it's it's sixty pounds. It's seventy dollars. It, it, it costs as pounds. much as a regular game. What the hell? That's the thing. I remember when games here used to cost forty pounds, thirty nine ninety nine. That was the price of a AAA game. I, I'm just I'm just gonna cry here in Canadian. <laughs> right? Fuck, 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 fuck both of you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck both of you that's almost double the price now fuck that <laughs> well, I mean, just sit back and like wait like you guys beautiful thing about a game you can outweigh it uh i wasn't even tempted to the last of us which i still haven't bought yet because i a i'm still waiting on that third patch fucking sony <laughs> um but on top of that i'm waiting for a halfway decent so they put it on sale it was like 47 bucks i like, get the hell out of here by that and like, like, like hum- humble bundles exist right like right you, like, you you can get it and other stuff for what you would pay for the one thing. Patience. Like, yeah. That recent bundle with all of the um, Resident Evil games, mm-hmm. well, not all of them, but most of them, that was a really good bundle. That was a really good bundle. Yeah. And, 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 and again, like, if you wait, then by the time you get to the game, it's patched. All the stuff is yeah, fixed. Yeah. It yeah, works all, properly all, then. All, <laughs> that was like, all, all the guides are out. Like, think yeah. about it, man. Uh, when I played uh, Horizon Ginger Turbo, uh, I, I had no idea that game. It was one of the first games that we saw like of the current generation uh, that from PlayStation, from Sony, to come to PC. And when I played it, I'm like, because I downloaded it, because uh, Joshi or whoever it was with the DKV, DX312? Uh, DKD3D? Yeah. D- all right. The DX12 one. Uh, 
was announced and like, hey, it kind of works with it. I'm like, oh shit, I really want to try it. So I bought the game to try it out. And I'm like, this is a fucking awesome game and it's a great experience. But apparently that game for like, uh, as is tradition, the first six months was atrocious on PC. So Which yeah. Like most Sony ports. Yeah. I think the one that ex- uh, escaped that fate was um, the Nathan Drake one. What's it called? Well, Jordan, you've been tasting Jordan. tasting some of that yes. uh, <laughs> early adopter uh, juice uh, with your Baldur's Gate, haven't you? Yes, I have. <laughs> uh, that, I, so I, I think, I, did, did I buy that? I think someone got that for me off my wish list. So thank you to whoever it was who did that. But yeah, like, th- even then, that's like $100 all, uh, Canadian with like all, all said and done. Because that was a, that was a, that's a triple a game that first but you're still getting the patches and you're running into bugs and oh yeah but like again larian has been on that pretty pretty heavily like they they they, but that that was kind of the thing with like the divinity games as well like they 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 once people like get to the to the parts where there are buggy where there are like a shit ton of bugs they get patched and then that's kind of it it kind of rock and rolls forever uh so yeah well i I did see some boulder games they were releasing some massive patches for it Oh yeah, and uh, th- mm-hmm. uh, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of mods for that as well. So hopefully, hopefully this will be a very easy way to install my big titty Giv Yankee mod. Yes. <laughs> what Ma- you don't like a uh, muscly Giv Yankee as she is? <laughs> well, listen, if, if we're not going to be lore accurate, then we might as well go for the big biggest titties possible. Mind flares, like, <laughs> big titty mind flares, baby. That's they all just have like massive boobs. A horny game. <laughs> For horny people, Baldur's Gate three. Buy an ad, Larry, and we can sell this shit. Yeah. Uh, speaking, so, speaking of horny games, uh, yeah, sure, yeah. Tell me how this one's up. I, Protagonist I mean, of vampire. Protagonist yeah, so, of vampire. So, <laughs> well, ex, ex vampire because he gets his jaw removed and thrown into an acid. Pit. He got fired. This is K- yeah, this is he actually did get fired. Uh, this is Kane two decomp. This is a decompilation of Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, the second game in the Legacy of Kane franchise. Hence Kane two. Um, but yeah, this is uh, being built off of the uh, PlayStation version. They're decompiling it. They're getting it. They're uh, adding some SDL two goodness to it and trying to get it running on a bunch of systems. Uh, EM script in um, and Linux are in the build tree. They don't have explicit build instructions, but it's all just CMake. Uh, I tried building it um, and it didn't find my lib glue, uh, but uh, but like I, I did, I did root through all the source code and all the build stuff for Linux and EM script in are there. Uh, I just didn't feel like fucking around with CMake and trying to get it to like locate where my actual lib glue library was. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, expecting to be done in three to four years. So they say that's not bad. Uh, <laughs> which, which, just which just remember, bad. though, remember that this this used to melt our brain with fidelity. This this was a game that did not have loading screens on the PlayStation. It just you mm-hmm. just had like one straight experience the entire way through. And that was fucking crazy. Yeah, Soul Reaver. Although the draw distance was tiny. <laughs> that's why you that's why you were in the foggy world, man. But yeah, yeah, Soul Reaver was one of those games that like really captured my imagination and blew my mind as a kid. I was obsessed with it. I played all the Legacy of Kane games. Uh and then man, I also- these uh, Wikipedia screenshots are bonk, homie. Uh that's oh, yeah. that, that, hang on, that's 100%. There we go. Yeah. I I mean to be fair that's what the tv resolution actually was back in the day so uh but yeah the 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 kane franchise really really captured my imagination idos did nothing with it they were fucking guest characters in a tomb raider game in like a fucking bonus level they they (laughs) they they fucking blue balled me with nosgoth and dead sun and then they ditched it embracer group bought it and now they're turning into extinguisher group and they're fucking killing all of these fucking companies i yeah if I, I would love to see a modernized Legacy of Kane, but barring that, I would I would be very, very happy to see this decomp done. Maybe get a high res texture pack. Just go back to that world. I, I fucking love it. Yeah, and if publishers are going to be dicks about uh, their old IP and just refuse to release remasters or even just re release the game as it is, people will get it working. I, I am fully in favor of people with the chops, like uh, the ones doing the Kane to uh, a decompilation to Ghost decompile Blade. and disassemble literally everything that comes across their hands for the sake of preservation. Please. <laughs> I mean, if you want your head to hurt, though, man, like you start looking at this right here and like, oh, this was a new project. Let's go check out the. Uh, why is there like 58 uh, releases? And you're like, 14 hours ago, 14 hours ago, 14, 14, 
<laughs> oh yeah. Well, the, 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 they're, yeah, they're all yeah, tags. Yeah. They're pre-release. Yes, Pedro, <laughs> understand how the tag system works. <laughs> that is still what they're working on and releasing the tags with the builds. Mm-hmm. Heavy so, development is the point mm, I'm yeah. trying to get across. Like they good, are going good, good old balls CIA. out. Yeah, these are auto builds, but dude, work's being done. I'm impressed. Mm-hmm. Dude, the Soul, Soul Reaver franchise has like a huge fan base that I've just been like itching for anything. So yeah, yeah. I, I, to, I I totally see like everyone just jumping on this. Like, oh my god, we can get it working on modern. It can you can play it on like a non PlayStation at like 1080p resolution. That would be pretty fucking cool. Yeah, this is the whole thing, man. Uh, and of course, I learned about the Valkyrie emulator, which is a tool to help uh, convert uh, PlayStation games. Mm-hmm. They're effectively giving everything the. Um wipeout treatment now which i'm 100 percent behind right and they do oh, make man. a note that like this is some you're gonna be able to play this on the web too yeah. oh yeah spe- speaking speaking of wipeout someone posted in discord that 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 guy he's just like yo man like sony fucking shitter get off the pot <laughs> make yeah, a, make a new wipeout that, uh, on yeah, the, that was it, on the a, bottom of yeah, the um, yeah. yeah github repo it's like if so you're not may- going to have a proper re-release and you're not going to do anything else with it then leave me alone fuck off <laughs> yeah or or alternatively hire me to just pay me to do the thing that i've already been doing for free yeah and you yeah. could keep it in-house and keep i'm sure sony's IP, sitting there going you profit from it sony's like we didn't make that game who the fuck are you talking to okay mm-hmm. yeah, whatever next <laughs> but come at me sony i'm like we do fuck off go away Sure. <laughs> I mean, I, th- I mean, what are Psygnosis doing nowadays? They're certainly not Nintendo. <laughs> Sony is certainly not Nintendo. Nintendo would have just been like, oh, you're going Nintendo's down. Nintendo's like, oh, is that a challenge, bitch? Here you go. <laughs> right? Like, but I, I mean, it's not like Nintendo wants to take a break from punching kittens all the time. Uh, oh, man. Psygnosis. Uh, okay. Defunct. Okay. Uh, who owns the, their IP nowadays? Was it a THQ Nordic thing and it's now a part of Defunct Embracer Group since- too? 2012. Ooh. Do not math how long ago that was because it has uh, been about 11 uh, years. Must, don't look at your hands. Don't look at your hands. <laughs> yeah. Kind of wild times. Uh, so if you want to write in, let us know about uh, your decompilation project. We'd love to talk about it. I'd love to have you on the show. And you can uh, be like, shower me project. with praise. And we will. How can they do mm-hmm. that, Pedro Mateus? Oh, they can do that in a multitude of different ways. They they can literally shower us on the street if they happen to uh, come across one of our faces. Uh, although, and ask first. <laughs> ask first, just saying. Uh, but the best way to get in touch is to go to lacegamecast.com. You hit the contact button. There's a form at the bottom of the contact page. At the top, cleverly enough, there's a few warnings and a few suggestions on how you should get in touch. And LGC Weekly is the topic you That's want to say. That's the showering emoji, right? Yeah, skeet, 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 <laughs> the skeet. tilde, 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 yeah. tilde. <laughs> D equals. <laughs> showering emoji. Hush. It's No, the D is the shower head, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different type of show. Um, See, that, that, that's, that's the show title. The D is the shower head. <laughs> So, Jordan, uh, we got somebody that wrote in. I'm like, huh, they're still alive. Yeah, Truggy, a.k.a. Paul. You might recommend recognize him. Recommend from, him from. Uh, you might yes, recommend, recommend him from Truggy. I, 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 I personally don't recommend Truggy, but you might. Oh. Uh, but uh, he's uh, been taking some time dealing with a child because he had one of those last time I heard. But he says, what's up, my glup glops? Wrong rambling message here, so feel free to edit it down or cut out paragraphs for the show. Been overboard for a long time, been in baby bubble, raising little truggy. That's nice. That's in a nice, <laughs> ni- that's in a nice routine. I'm catching up with LGC on and Linux Game Ca- Weekly Daily Wednesday. So on Arch Linux, I do enjoy your Arch discussions. What I liked about Arch was building a clean system. That's yours. Pick your FS partitions, swap. D, etc., and build exactly what you want on top of a clean base image. No blow, just exactly what you want. Never had a problem gaming on it. Until you try to upgrade it. I remember ditching Arch because someone kept updating Python. Uh, breaking half my axe. I know rolling back is a thing, but I'm a lazy bitch. Another reason I enjoyed a rolling distro. I had Arch installs that were over five years old. 
Old distro, so it must be around 2018. Oh wow, he's going back through all the all the hate mails of like all the yes. random questions we've asked. Um, 2018, he ditched Arch. Uh, get around to doing a fresh install. It's always a clean install. Spinnies. Not only do I load games off Spinnies. Oh, he he actually uses the splatter hard drives. Uh, but it's an external Spinny because games are so fucking big these days. If I like a game, there's a problem with load times. Or disk IO, I can always delete 50 to 100 gigs of porn from my downloads folder, transfer the game to my SSD. Quake 2, <laughs> thanks for this. First time I played it, though, was when it came out on, playing on a single core potato with no GPU at around three frames a second. Did you, what, what, what were you Quake playing two. Quake at when, uh, when it came out? Oh, my pretentious says I had a Voodoo, is this either on my Voodoo 1 or Voodoo 3. So what, 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 what was that, like 20, 25 frames a second, 30? 60. Was it 60? All right. Yeah, fucking Voodoo, son. I, I listen. I, I I don't know. I never six forty by four eighty, but sixty. Yeah, <laughs> eight hundred by six hundred, probably. Probably yeah, eight hundred by six hundred. Riva TNT two for me. <laughs> that was the first dedicated graphics card that I had. <laughs> uh, also, also some uh, advice to Pedro: having have a kid as soon as you can afford it. It's the best hardest thing yeah. he's ever no. done with his life. <laughs> uh, so you know what, Pedro, hide. Nori, Nori, hide all of the condoms or poke holes in them, I guess. <laughs> PPS. My original email was going to start with why the fuck doesn't uh, Proton DB have a tab for hiding all the Steam Deck posts? Glad they did something about that. Wow. This is, well, this is, this is a long update. We now know what's going on <laughs> Thank with Chuggy. You, <laughs> we, we, ha we have his entire autobiography, even. It seems like just yesterday he was in LA getting in the wrong side of a car. <laughs> it seems like only yesterday he was in, in L.A. driving like a crazy person in a Mustang. I mean, if you're going to be in L.A. driving a Mustang, I mean, you need to yeah. fit in, right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> good, good. Time. So we got a couple I, of things. I'll be though. sure to ignore your recommendation there, Drake. <laughs> a, because I don't have money. B, because the place is currently too tiny to host a third like person. That, like that's, that's never stopped humans in the history of uh, well everything. yeah thankfully well I, no i am human so i can't use that one you <laughs> now, here's a real question it's on spinning hard drives drug is like yo i had an external spinning hard drive which here's a challenge did you ever have an external spinny drive that wasn't a laptop drive that doesn't count we're talking full size five and a quarter here uh, uh yeah i had an adapter that you could just populate with your own yes it broke right. eventually <laughs> yeah the, for what did uh, you do five, for power? five and a quarter for three yeah uh, three and a half inch like desktop sized hard drives the 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 yeah. power was a um wall wart yeah uh it was a full iec like kettle lead the same yeah. use for your power supply I remember having like a Western Digital Passport. It was one of those like upright drives that had like the little heat sink at the bottom. And yeah, like you just had a separate thing you plugged into the wall. Mm. You know, it was a three and a half inch hard drive. Yeah, I had like an aluminium uh, like chonker thing that I started. Like, it was so convoluted to put the damn thing together. I'm like, I don't care. And, 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 <laughs> and, I, and now, now that I have a storage server, it's just like, oh, it's on the network. I don't have to drag a hard drive around if I want to like watch a movie on the Xbox or something. <laughs> was that a short or long period of time where? Because I, I always shied away from external drives at the time because they were all spinning drives. And if you looked at them wrong, you were going to lose data. Mm -hmm. shake, shake them up a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like, like an extra, Although laptop, laptop drives, probably because of the density and the pressure like that they have, the platters and were like, sort of sensors expected. built into them so they could lock yeah. up when they were like, hey, free fall. Let's uh, uh, stop Oh, spinning. we're in free fall yeah. mode. Let's just that, stop. That, 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 was, that was a ThinkPad <laughs> thing. They're just like, hey, we, our sensors will detect when you drop the fucker. And yeah, no, laptop drives were far more resistant, which is, I think, why everyone just standardized for external hard drives, the one that you were expected to carry around. To be the laptop ones, well, um, but there could, are still the big like, uh, could you, like the ones could you that Strider imagine? has the eight terabyte and twelve terabytes that are just like add-ons next to your PC. Little baby drive. <laughs> could, could you imagine Nicholas though if we had like a uh, three and a half inch SSDs instead of like the little laptop sized ones? There's just, like so much empty space. They have them. The Do the they? size ones. Yeah. Three point five S uh, like full size. Well, yeah, they're right. uh, they're bigger than the two and a half than the um, like two and a half inch laptop size ones. Like the SAS SSD is like the uh, like 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 this like the size like SSD. Yeah. Huh. 
All right, let me find on. a picture. Yeah, uh, so uh, we gotta find a picture. <laughs> like, five and a quarter. Like, I, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I just thought they were all like two and a half inches now. Right. Yeah, there uh, you go. Where? I, I, I guess if you really need to cram them full an end, then where? Like, yeah. I'm getting the picture. Oh, this takes a while. <laughs> Copying, pasting. This, 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 this is exciting drama here on Lex Gamecast. Oh, that's in a cage. Yeah, that's that's it, in a cage. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the you can see the drive at the back there. Let me see if I can find the other pictures. I'm working with spotable. a tiny browser. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah that 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 is an a, that is an adapter. That my doesn't friend. count, that, homie. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm Let me see if I can find a picture of just a drive. Ish. <laughs> no, we gotta Let keep me. jumping down your throat. Here's what you're looking at right here, peeps. Uh, cause like this whole left side's empty. Yeah. Yeah, the, look, look at the what I posted below. <laughs> that's, that looks, that, 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 that's a that, SAS drive. Yeah, that looks, yes, that looks, that's that looks, what I said. The SAS drives. <laughs> but that's literally not, what I said. <laughs> calm the fuck down, Pinocchio. Um, <laughs> tilde, 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 tilde. Right? Don't you know? <laughs> They're SAS SSDs, and they come in three and a half inch form factor. Yes. Now to Jordan's question, did they ever make uh, like regular SSDs in five and a quarter? Or Not three that and I'm aware of. <laughs> Audience, I, I I just thought it would just be a very a very funny thing where it's just like a large metal box with like very little actual storage in it. Uh, well, I want one that's like vertical, but it's got an NVMe slot on it, so it's just kind of mm. like that sticking out the ass end of it, and you click it in. Mm, yeah, mm. but I like the idea of vertical NVMe's. Some motherboards have those. Hmm. Which yeah, you just gotta like, like make, make yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. Not all right. Yes. All right. <laughs> Outside of like, oh, that's handy. You just click it right in, but also snap. Yeah. Be, be, yeah. Some <laughs> ac- accidental hand movement. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. Right. He's like steel cages on both sides of it. Uh, yeah. Or or, or 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 like yeah. Some some sort of like support or something to like stop stop that exact thing from. Happening. Oh. Okay. Right. Uh, Mister Alert's got a good one. Uh, how much density could we stack into a five and a quarter full height like a Bigfoot drive? <laughs> oh like, man. Just filled with men. We someone's got to call up Seagate. Be like, hold on. Get 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 a pile of cocaine ready. I got to. You got to do it right. I was like, I bet you all fuckers can't. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, look, there's another uh, example there. Oh, and there you go. Well, there's the squeaky one holding I, I, the. Uh, <laughs> well, the second you go to Enterprise, I'm like, yeah, sure. Well, uh, I, I guess I guess we're not talking about that like 66 core Intel thing, but like, yeah, that, that, that's sort of like where my brain went to. Of like, how how much can we cram in there? Well, it's Eight not core, even like 66 the, threads per core. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a barrel style processor, so cores are going to be like how many megahertz yeah. are each one of those cores? Like, oh, cool. Yeah, it's made for like large graph traversal. It's, uh, like, it's it's not something you're going to plug into your fucking. It's PC. yeah, good for like AI and stuff like that. They they serve the home kind of missed the point on that because what they're doing is bringing in uh, optical closer mm-hmm. to the silicon. Yeah, the, the the optical networking thing that was, yeah. that was interesting, like, la- la- like laser based CPUs sitting stuff. right there, yeah, light based. Which yeah. that's going to be in our future at some point. But like once you start having uh, optical interconnects and you're not uh, limited by, because you think about like you know, there's the only the, the, the resistance of the copper. Yeah, and PCI whatnot. Express three versus four and five. Like that's the same fucking traces, just some are closer and made better. Like there's not like. So once you once, once we're slaying shit with optical, like, hey Jordan, could you could you plug in the other card? I want to use it for a second. <laughs> yeah, just puff 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 pass. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, the, the, we 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 still need uh, <laughs> proper hot plugging for at least for end user stuff. That'd be hey. nice. <laughs> why, why would you want that? Uh, it, it, it's, it's very hot when you unplug the live, right? the live CPU. And, what, are you t- what are you talking about? It's like it's like the opposite of cold. Yeah, that's the thing. It's hot when you unplug it. I'm talking about hot plugging. <laughs> Speaking of heat, when you have a CPU design like that, though, you can put more stuff off chip. Mm-hmm. Uh, things are yeah. getting to, possibilities start opening up when you have to like you know think with like, huh? All right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's gonna be like latency. Like these are things that can be made in a lab sometimes on Tuesdays after 4 p.m. Yeah. So yeah, productization of these is gonna be a long ways off, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Is that it? Are we full? Do, do we do we have any assignments for next uh, week's hate mail? We get anything that needs answering? Uh, no. Oh, uh, 
Any of you using a SAS uh, card for SAS drives on your home machine, like your personal computer? Uh-huh. <laughs> have, have Let you, us have know. You built, how much did they? Built, how much did they cost? <laughs> have you <laughs> built a five and a quarter inch SSD out of thumb drives <laughs> and duct tape? <laughs> Why don't you just like the SAS ports on your motherboard? Oh, right. The Threadripper motherboards. <laughs> they, they have the... Yeah, probably. Uh-huh. <laughs> also epic. <laughs> yeah. The same platform, effectively. <laughs> nah, not according to AMD. <laughs> not, not, not according to these two pins that we moved. <laughs> Fuck you. That's why. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do better than that, so let's cue the music. We're not, we're not, we're not going to thank the people? Fine. No, we gotta, we, well, I, I mean, I no mean, music they, for you. No music for me, for you just you yet. music I, pooper. I waited until the end, damn it. You gave me shit last week, and I'm like, fine, fine, I'm gonna wait. Well, we, got, we, gotta, we gotta thank all of you guys for making this possible. We gotta thank all the lovely humans supporting us by going to LinuxGameCast.com, clicking oh. on the support button, and following all the various links there to our PayPals, to our Patreons, which you can get access to our Discord. Uh, to our Twitches, which you can give us those Bezos bucks. Get in, also get into our Discord. We got Bitcoin. We got Amazon wish lists. You can buy stuff off there. Send us some notes. If you, uh, we we'll have to read them on live on the air. Send Ven some stuff. You get your name in lights. We got a store. Get your T-shirts. We got uh, the Amazon storefront. If you really want to know what kind of hardware we're running, and because people keep asking us all the time, there is a list on the internet. You can go there and check it out. Uh yeah, we got we got some humans we gotta thank. We gotta thank Justin, we gotta thank Mir, we gotta thank Gameotron, Strauss Games, Basil, and Alex for being lovely, lovely Twitch subs, giving us them Bezos bucks. Still seeing ads because we're clicking that see ads even if you give a <laughs> you subscribe button. Because we're assholes like that. Oh man, that's a dick move. I wouldn't do that. Um if that ever happens, somebody send me a message and be like, yo, dick. I'm like, oops. <laughs> Hey, we thank you for your support. Uh, we got a bunch of things that unlock if you can support us on Patreon. That's the best way to do it. And uh, we got pre pre super shows. And if you like this show and you're like, shit, I could use another hour of this every week, we got you covered. We got it in podcast format, we got it in video format. I tried to put some early stuff out. Uh, I haven't finished it yet. I got all the bits. I'm ready to make it a real boy. The uh, what it was like playing around with that Kona LHI um, professional broadcast video capture card on Linux, maybe Monday or Tuesday. Again, I just got to assemble everything, put it out. I'll put that out early for patrons. Get a look at it. Give me some feedback on it. We need to change anything. And we got a couple of shows that we do. Not just this. Um, we're back on Tuesdays and Thursdays with Track Mania. Also, if you know somebody who's an old Track Mania like person who understands like Mania script, because what I want to do, I got it in my head that I want to do a cup of the day server for Track Mania too. Public server, not a Patreon server, just something like good old fashioned. Vin's going to burn money for the good of the community for in like 10 people, but I want to get that going, but I need some help. I need some help because knockout mode is not supported for whatever reason, or maybe it is. And I'm too dumb to figure it out. Cause I don't understand mania script. Mm. Come play with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays. No experience required. It's a good excuse to hang out, have some fun, new maps each and every week. And Jordan's doing streaming on Thursday, Baldur's gate, baby, bringing in multiplayer, him and empty are trying to figure out how to bald them gates so bald many yeah. gates <laughs> and of course we do this every saturday come join us live if you get a chance now can i play the music sure fine yeah <laughs> i release you <laughs> on that bombshell ladies and gentlemen cue the music all right so you can find us each and every saturday night pulling out of the nightmare train station of nightmare trainees because that's what nightmare trains do, man. That and they bite. Choo choo. Yes. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me, I'm still on uh, Zitter at Finstone. I'm still doing that. We have our own federated uh, Mastodon instance. Had it for like six years now. Mast.linuxemcast.com. You can find me there Thank at you, Vin. All yeah. All uh, blame blame uh, Zibic or Zibic. However you want to go. Uh, <laughs> Exhibit, exhibit yo dog exhibit, I, heard you, I heard you like mastodon so i put a mastodon in your mastodon so you can mastodon like mastodon all right uh yeah that, that's pretty much it for me on social media hop into our discord if you're a twitch subscriber or a patron link that discord come say hey that's where we're at the other six days of the week we're not on site we're on irc though our irc is linked to our discord so if you want to come say hi there that's another way to do it i am the dungeon master or 
uh, at the very least, I'm, I'm the basement master. You can follow me on Mastodon at Frojo at Mastodon.com. And I guess I'm still on X Twitter, my X, X Twitter, Twitter, the, that burning fool. Well, I'm certainly not going to give it to you, uh, but you can find me on Mastodon. Uh, that's uh, unaccounted for with the actual number four at the end at mass.lytics.gamecast.com. At uh, I am there. I lurk. I occasionally retweet things that I think are funny or I get the reference. That's it. I, I don't do social media very well. Could not get downtown fast enough to get all those free IMAX, though, that Mike Hoy posted about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you actually went for it. Okay. <laughs> no, I thought about it, but it's like... You oh, do the logistics on that. Yeah, it's like, it would take like 90 minutes to get down there. Those gone. are gone. Yeah. Let's roll some credits. <laughs> High rate of fire. Yeah. <laughs> Spray. And don't bother praying. No one's listening. Yeah. You, can, you, can, you can pray if you want. Thoughts, spray and thoughts and prayers. We got to thank our advisors. We got to thank Omega Sartheran. We got to thank our executive producers. It's Bob Bram, Scott Michaud, Atomic Cast, Mike G, Drummer, Tomaj, Akeem, David, Eshep, and Ian, and our little Nicky fan, Super Destote, Empty, Glorious Egg Roll, and Blast. Blah. The Sea Monsters, Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Nub, and Darkwing, System T, Denzing, Joe, Ogi, One, and Kyrillo. What did Death know? It's Nova, Basil, Chazel, Chazel? Chad. Chazel. <laughs> Chazel. <laughs> Romeo, <name>. Marson. <laughs> that little cock up made me lose. Uh... <laughs> sorry, Chazel. Uh, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that, Patreons. That's, that's the name of this episode. It's just Chazel. 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 Carl Chazel. Biker, theoretic neurologist, <laughs> not close, John Eshop, Gabertron, you know it. DSN Joe, Aromatic Dev, and Kai Jora. Thank you <laughs> for being a fine, upstanding cannibal. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen. Bad of fire. Chazel. Chazel. Hi, Chazel. <laughs> It's like it's like Chasm, like Chad. Chasm sounds like he should be in the next fucking Barbie movie. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>